So, it's Halloween. Time to carve the pumpkin and make that jack-o'-lantern. And when carving the pumpkin, you want three bowls. One for the pumpkin meat, one for the pumpkin seeds, and one for anything else that you don't wish to keep. It separates out everything and it allows you to use the material you remove later for cooking, which is what we're going to be doing after we carve the jack-o'-lantern. Now the tools we're going to use are a knife and a big spoon. To begin with, we need to cut open the top. It's best to angle the knife inwards. This gives you a lid that's easily removed and can be put back in place and will sit still if that's wanted. So, there's a bit of waste material there, which I'm just going to get rid of. And then there's actually some good pumpkin meat here on the top. And that's going to go into this bowl. We can now put that aside. Uh, I could also put the knife aside, which is, well, actually, we're going to just, you can see we have a steep angle going in here. So we're just going to cut that straight down a little bit to open that up and give us easier access. And we'll also remove a little bit of the meat. And one of the reasons for removing the meat when making a jack-o'-lantern, obviously, is because it makes everything a lot thinner and therefore easier to access. And again, I'm just going to slice some of this unwanted material off. The meat is what we're going to use a little later to make our pumpkin pie. And yes, this is slippery stuff. ourselves. Uh, we're saving the pumpkin seeds because of course they can be salted and roasted and made into a nice dish themselves. But in addition to the seeds we have a lot of this sort of pulp matter the pulp we're not interested in saving, the seeds we are, and so this is actually the first step, just separating the seeds from the pulp. doesn't matter if you get a few little bits of pulp in with the seeds, but you want to keep that to a minimum. And the seeds do come out pretty easily once you get started. I'm going to say the pulp is just waste. Although that said, I mean, you know, if you have compost pile or something of this nature, it need not go to waste. But you're not really going to cook with that. And, um, I'm spilling a few seeds, but I'll pick them up in a moment. And again, with the seeds, what you would do is rinse them off salt them, roast them in the oven. We will perhaps focus more on that next year uh, in that video. Or we might actually do that next week because the seeds we can actually set aside for quite a little while. And if we don't want to deal with them until next week, that's not really a problem. Your hands, by the way, will be getting slimy from this process. Don't worry, it washes off real easy. The pumpkin meat, of course, we can make, as we're going to today, pumpkin pie. Uh, we can also make things like pumpkin soup, but uh, I think that will go outside the scope of this particular video. As you can see, we get a fair few seeds out of this. So that will make a really tasty snack in its own right, and very healthy too, I have to say. So with the spoon, we're going to gently scrape the inside of the pumpkin, working in sort of a spiral on our way down. 
And what I'm doing is just loosening up the worst of the pulp so that that can just be pulled out and gotten out of the way. I might sift through that pulp because there are going to be a few more seeds in there. And I might choose to rescue those. But I'm only doing this very lightly at this stage because I'm just trying to get that really stringy pulp out of the game because obviously a little bit of it in, in the pumpkin pie mix or a little bit of it into a pumpkin soup isn't going to be an issue, but you wouldn't want a lot of it in there because it is just a bit stringy and a bit yucky. So we'll use that particular technical term, shall we? Now ready to have the internal meat removed. Now, first of all, that's going to be helpful when we call this into a jack-o'-lantern because it'll make the walls of the pumpkin thinner so it's not so difficult to cut through. And second of all, it gives us our meat to cook with. And literally, we're just going to use the spoon. You don't do this with a knife. Doing this with a knife is a good way to hurt yourself. And you literally just carve in there and scoop bits out. By the way, this technique of having the pumpkin on its side and scraping along the bottom, going up and down, It's a very good technique for loosening a lot of material quickly, evenly, and easily compared to trying to do it with the pumpkin this way up and going around the sides. Get better leverage on it. The other thing, of course, is you want to be a little bit careful not to scrape so hard that you go all the way through. Mainly because it's the inner flesh that you want, not the outer skin. And also, kind of wreck your jack o' lantern if you go all the way through. Unless you were very creative about your carving. that carve through is something of a feature but as you can see the bowl is almost full now and uh, to be fair this pumpkin is pretty much done just a tiny little bit left I'll be ready to turn it into a jack-o-lantern and then working on our pudding. We have our seeds, we have our pulp, and we have our main bit of pumpkin meat, as well as a carved, a hollowed out pumpkin, which I'll now carve into a jack-o'-lantern. Uh, you can make it as simple or as complex as you want. I'm going to go quite simple this year, and then we'll get on with making our pie. So carving the jack-o'-lantern is very simple. You're just trying to make a basic scary face. So we'll start off with the eyes. and then we do the other eye. If they don't match perfectly, just makes it a little bit more of a scary face and that's just fine. But there's the basic eyes. Traditionally, you have a 
nice little triangular nose. And then when carving the mouth, it's a good idea to try to carve in a few teeth. to take a bit of shape. Always nice to give it a bit of a smile. Not too much by way of right or wrong with this, so if you can get something nice and spooky like so, that gives you a decent jack-o'-lantern face. Now, the real test is what's it like lit up inside with everything else around it dark? And that, boys and girls, is a halfway decent jack-o'-lantern and hardly difficult to make. Now, when it comes to making the pie, we're going to have to prepare our mix. And you can use ready-made pie casings, like these miniature ones, of uh, sweet pastry cases, which will make for some mini pies. Or you can make it from scratch. Now, I'm going to do my main pie it's a full-size pumpkin pie, and I'll now demonstrate how to make the casing. Well, to be fair, I'm not actually going to show you the blind bake for the pie casing on this particular video. That'd be a little bit long. We'll do that on a subsequent video. But the point is you can use either store-bought pastry or homemade. Either works just fine. At this point, we're going to start preparing our actual pumpkin filling. Now, this is the main bowl of the pumpkin meat, and here we've removed just over a pound, about half a kilo of pumpkin, which we're now going to uh, put in some water, bring to a simmer, let it simmer for down for a little bit to become nice and soft, and then we're going to puree. hot water and we're going to bring this to a boil and then lower the temperature so it can simmer for about 10 minutes or so which will soften it right down and allow us to puree it. Now, while I'm waiting for everything to puree, we're going to have a look at some of the other ingredients that go into a pumpkin pie. We want 300 ml of double cream. You would want 180 grams of sugar, unless you are trying to avoid sugar, as I am. So here I'm using Splenda instead. Now, this is 18 grams of Splenda. It takes up the same volume and has the same sweetness as 180 grams of sugar. If you are using sugar, you might want to use a brown sugar. It has a little bit more flavor, but here we're just adding sweetness. Then you want your ground spices. Now we have nutmeg, ginger, uh, we have cloves, and cinnamon. And there's a heap teaspoon of each of these. Now, on top of this, we want two eggs. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the dry ingredients together and just using just using a dry fork I'm going to blend all of this together into a powder and I'm now 
going to take this powder, get back in the small bowl here, and this, this is pretty much what people refer to when they talk about pumpkin spice. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break my two eggs into the bowl. And we're going to beat them until they are uniform. I'm going to add my 300 ml of double cream. And beat that through. Incorporating the eggs in it. And now a little bit of time I'm going to add my dry spice and I'm going to keep eating this through till it's all incorporated. And uh, this is creating a nice thick batch of heavily spiced creamy, everything that goes into a pumpkin pie inside the pumpkin. Uh, one thing I will say is if you are watching this video at some other time of year and pumpkins are nowhere to be seen and you are minded to make this, I will tell you that instead of using pumpkin, you can take the same weight of carrots, peel them, chop them up, boil them, puree them, and mix them with this because by the time you are actually done, although you can detect the carrot flavor in there, if you're not paying attention, it looks and pretty much tastes like pumpkin pie because one thing about this liquid here is it has a very strong spice set. So it is very much the key flavor coming through. Pumpkin itself does not have a very strong flavor. It's much more delicate than that. So. Uh, another orange vegetable such as carrots which again has a flavor much more delicate than this particular spice set is going to make just as good a pie that'll taste almost the same this will now go in the refrigerator so I'm ready for it so we're going to take the colander and we're going to pour the now simmered pumpkin through that and there's a bit of excess moisture, but we shake most of that out. And then that then goes into this glass jug. Of course, you can use a food processor or a jug and a hand processor like this one. But... It's a great deal to puree it into a soft mush. That'll now need a few minutes to cool down because it's still very hot, having come fresh off the stovetop. Uh, if you boiled it for a little bit longer, if you didn't have a food processor or a hand processor, you could use a potato masher. But basically the idea is to get it into a consistency that would be kind of like baby food. To take our spice liquid, Pour everything together. And give it a quick zet to blend it all together. Now, That may seem very liquidy to you, and you'd be quite right for thinking so. This is the thing about a pumpkin pie. It starts off, like a lot of vegetable pies, as a liquid going into a hard casing and then going in the oven and cooking slowly. Now, to avoid disaster, and I'm speaking from experience, there's nothing in any of these pie casings because when you are maneuvering it into the oven, it's the easiest thing in the world 
to get a little bit of a wobble and have that liquid spill everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this partly in the oven and then pour the filling into the pie casings very quickly but carefully and then finish sliding them into the oven and closing the door. This avoids disaster. Now you can see we're making two sides. We're making a standard size pie, which is around about an eight inch, and which is 17, 18, 20 centimeters. Uh, and then of course we have these very small casings, which we got from the supermarket. Now for these small ones, they want 40 minutes in the oven. And this one would want 70 minutes in the oven. Um, the temperature is going to be 160. It's a low temperature. It cooks slowly. You are starting off with a filling which is pretty much liquid. You can't rush it. It's just that simple. But a smaller casing will take less time. So these come out after 40 minutes. This comes out after 70. So let's see if we can do this without making a mess. So I'm going to open the door balance on the edge here and one, two, three, four, five, six, and then that one gets filled really all the way slowly into the oven. now just be allowed to cook and now while we're waiting for everything to finish cooking it's time to get a bit more into the holiday mood happy Halloween so at this point we need to take the small ones out having spent 40 minutes in there uh, the big one actually see from how it's wobbling isn't ready yet. However, we put the small ones on the cooling rack to cool. And they will soon be ready and the big one goes back in for its last half hour. So it's had 70 minutes in the oven, and it's time to come out. And I'm just going to check this. It's a little on the wobbly side, but we would expect that. out of the pie pan, but right now it's just too hot to do that. We're just going to let that settle down a little bit, and then we'll take that out. These, of course, have cooled down. And if you like the smell of pumpkin pie, you want to be in my kitchen right now, because it's gorgeous. So you see... It is good. As always, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it interesting. Perhaps you might want to have a go at making one. If you have experience making these and you do it differently, maybe you might leave a comment. Give us some idea about your recipe. In any event, I hope you have a good one. Like, comment, share, and if you like, subscribe. Have a good one.